okay? I would like you to tell you about how my students have benefited from using videos with interactive quizzes in a first year calculus course. First a bit background. My calculus course is uh, taught at the University of Southern Denmark. It's targeted uh, electrical engineering uh, program, education program, and is structured in uh, around uh, 14 uh, modules, each of uh, three and a half hour uh, duration, which is structured like uh, seen over here. Prior to the, to the lecture or, or block, there is some preparation using uh, videos and uh, book, textbook. Then there is a face-to-face -face lecture and within that a small formative uh, assessment and finally there are, is one and a half hour used for working on, on exercises with the students and during the exercise phase I walk around the room and helping with exercises together with an elder student so that's the general uh, structure of the class to increase the uh, level of preparation for the students we hand out weekly notes for them so they each week know exactly which videos to watch and which part of the, the book to, to read prior to, to the lecture. The videos are of worked examples related to what will be covered in the lecture. So I describe how to solve a certain problem and take them through all the, the smaller details uh, in that. In addition to that, we have tried to augment some of the videos with uh, small quiz elements so that uh, the videos are paused and uh, the, the student is uh, posed a, a question that it, the, the student should answer prior to, to continuing with the, the video. And this is what we'll talk a bit more about in, in this presentation. To get something to compare with, we have these non-interactive videos or our standard videos, which is a black canvas where I draw on top with a colored pen. It's a simple screencast. It requires a very uh, simple setup and it facilitates low cost production of, of videos. So it's kind of easy to, to get started with and uh, try to, to take a look at, look at Khan Academy with what can be accomplished uh, using an approach like this. But a video is not just enough. We want the student to learn something from the video. And if we can get them to, to learn something more from a video and how to approach that, we can take a look at the Bloom's taxonomy. Because a, a standard video would often target both the understanding and remembering uh, levels according to, to Bloom's taxonomy, which is w some of the, the lower learning uh, teaching uh, goals. And if we can create videos that instead would apply or reach the apply and analyze level, we, the, the students might even take more away from, from watching, watching the videos. And this is what we have tried to do with these uh, videos with interactive elements. And the first type of interactive video, we ask the students to complete some intermediate calculations. In this example, the, the students should use the chain rule to differentiate a, a certain uh, function. And at this moment, the video then pauses and the student can fill in the answer or what they think is the correct answer in, in these two boxes. And after that, they can click a button and see whether the answer was right or wrong. The way this is created is that during recording of a standard video, uh, I draw some uh, rectangular uh, boxes, which indicate that here should an answer be inserted into the video. When I then upload the video to our video hosting site, I annotate the, the video uh, with information about that 3 minutes and 31 uh, second uh, into the video, the video should pause. And there should be a text box at this location and at this location. And in addition to that, the correct answer in this box will be uh, this value and in this box uh, a different value. So now the system is set up and it knows when to show these uh, text boxes, that is, post the, the questions, 
and it also knows how to grade them because it knows what is right uh, or what is the right answers in, in these boxes. So this approach would force the students to try to apply some knowledge to being able to, to solve these exercises. The different uh, video type we have looked into is this kind of video where the students should choose a proper solution strategy for a certain problem. In this case, we're looking at an integration problem and the two relevant uh, solution methods are either substitution by, or integration by substitution or integration by parts. And in the box up here, the students can then indicate which approach they would prefer to use here or think is the correct one. After the students have answered, I continue the video by showing how I would solve a problem including which method I would try to use and why the other method might fail. So this is the, the general approach for, for these videos, that it's always demonstrated how to solve the, the post question. We have used, used a lot of videos within this course, but to focus on a few uh, videos, we only look into videos related to integration and differential equations. And uh, the eight videos we have found are the following here. They all have a duration from 5 to, to 12 minutes. And the videos containing questions are divided into smaller chunks of 2 to 3 minutes before there is embedded a new question inside the video. So the, the students cannot watch a video with embedded questions for that long before they are uh, disturbed by a new question. And to, to quote one of my students, they state that videos have given me a clearer understanding of content we read in calculus. Books seem somehow complicated at times, and it is nice to have a media which quickly and precisely clarifies how things are connected. If I could choose, I would like this kind of videos in all my courses. So there are clearly a student that favors this kind of, of videos. We have tried to, to look a bit more into this uh, about how the students perceive the, the learning outcome from these uh, three types of videos. We have also tried to look into how students use these three types of videos and for that you have to see the, the paper related to the conference. We also have a question about how interactive videos support deeper learning. And finally, we ask about whether students uh, value the idea of flipped uh, classroom and these face-to-face -face elements. So how we have approached this study is a questionnaire that a bit more than half of the student uh, answered, consisting both of uh, log responses and uh, free text responses. In addition to that, we have looked at statistics from the site, ho site that hosts the uh, videos where you have information about when each video was uh, viewed and also on the number of interactive interactions with the interactive elements. The first question we posed the student were which type of video helps you the most. And they clearly prefer the interactive videos and don't really discriminate between these two or there's no significant difference between uh, the, the two types of interactive videos but the interactive videos are clearly preferred compared to the non-interactive video or the standard type of video. We also ask the students to grade the difficulty of each of these uh, eight videos and after ordering the videos by the average uh, difficulty perceived by the student we get this list, list where the most easy uh, videos are placed at the bottom and the more difficult are at the top. And we can see uh, a clear uh, trend in, in these uh, data that videos covering things that are known by students partially uh, prior to their um, education, integration by parts and integration by substitutions, are regarded easier than uh, new topics like partial fractions and long division of polynomials, which they haven't seen before entering this class. We've also tried to look at some uh, viewing statistics uh, 
throughout the, the course. The course started here on September 1st, and then we have plotted the total number of views of videos from September 1st and until a certain date. And what we can see here is, is that many students watch uh, a video just prior to a lecture. Each lecture is uh, indicated by these uh, uh, gray or black lines. Okay, And we can also see that just prior to the exam in uh, January, the number of views increases again. If we take this plot and split it into curves for each uh, independent video, we can see that each video is watched typically a few hours or maybe even a, a day prior to the lecture. So the students are just fresh on, on that video uh, when entering the, the lecture. And then they often go back and see some videos just prior to, to the actual exam. We ask the student to grade the learning effect of uh, different uh, learning resources. And here they are very uh, keen on using these interactive videos. Both types are graded very high, even higher than the lectures and the exercise sessions. And then we have the, the non-interactive videos and finally the textbook, which the students really don't like. But we need to, to take into account that the interactive videos are small chunks of uh, yeah, more or less digested uh, mathematical knowledge that the students can just use, whereas the textbook they have to, to do uh, a lot of more work uh, themselves. And the lectures and the exercises are somewhat uh, in between in, in, this, uh, in this approach. So to conclude, we see that videos help students feel more prepared for the face-to-face -face sessions. We can see that uh, interactive videos are estimated significantly better than both non-interactive video and the uh, textbook. And based on the text answers that the student provide, we have an indication that higher learning is uh, reached, but uh, it's only indications and we haven't really proved that part. So the next step at the University of Southern Denmark would be to produce additional videos with these interactive elements as they seem to, to work quite well. And we also need to state very clearly that the videos only give an overview of a topic and that the textbook is still relevant to read because it adds all these uh, additional details that cannot be covered in a video of, of typically uh, 10 minutes or so. In the long term, or our long term interest uh, includes to, to look into how students perceive feedback, both during these interactive videos and also during face to face sessions. That is, how much do they learn from the feedback? Finally, there was some time for questions and discussion at the conference, and I will try to give an overview of some of the questions that were posed. And the first question was what software was used for hosting the, the videos. And it's actually some software we del developed ourselves at the University of Southern Denmark. We had a student programmer use approximately 300 hours to, to de develop it. And it's all available on, um, on uh, GitHub under an open source license so others can try to use the same software and host their, their own videos if they want to do that. There's more information about this on in the paper or otherwise just uh, contact me uh, through email and then we'll figure out how to, to approach this. Then a question about which software is needed for the students to use these interactive videos and they just need a, a standard browser, uh, Firefox or uh, Chrome or something like that. And then they can enter the uh, site hosting the videos and just watch it uh, as they would on YouTube or, or any other places. So no special software are needed for the students. Then there were a question about what is the typical content of a video and especially 
the, the question were asked about what is the content of a video about uh, integration, for instance. And in that case, we the, the video will contain a worked example where I try to use one solution method for an integration problem. For instance, I will try to use integration by substitution to solve a certain problem. And during recording of that video, I will make sure to capture all the small details that I need to be aware of to use the approach uh, in the real way on this um, this uh, certain problem. So it's just uh, an illustration of how to solve a certain problem uh, that is given in the video, not a theoretical background for how to approach uh, other problems like this one. And finally, there was a question about how wrong answers are interpreted by the system, and if they, the system uh, assessed it somehow that oh, that answer was probably due to this error or, or not. At the moment, the system only grades right or wrong, or false or correct, and we're not that interested in interpreting how the different answers can be wrong. If the students, for instance, have missed a minus sign somewhere, or constant or whatever that, that can be because the focus is on making the students do some calculations and learning how to, to use the terminology um, within the topic and not so much on how many things are right or wrong when they actually use the system. So the system is not intended to use for assessment of the students but only as a kind of learning platform for them. Okay. So this was what I got uh, out from the, the presentation at uh, INTET uh, 17 and some of the questions I got there also. I hope you got something out of this.